Good morning, folks. We've got a ton of articles to hit today. We'll come out swinging and won't stop till eyes open no fear. Let's begin with our star at spaceweathernews.com and we find the sun without sunspots and with the coronal holes pushed to high latitude. Watching towards the end, to the left, next coronal hole became visible in coming overnight. The solar wind elevated intensity slightly. It wasn't any sort of impact, just a return from ultra-low stream intensity back up to more normal range. Coronal hole effects could be seen over the weekend from the departing openings and could finally drive some higher geomagnetic indices of the KP. Want to go to Europe because the low south of Iceland is heading east. Dangerous wind gusts and flash floods possible as the convergence crosses over the UK and then begins to affect Europe at large. Cold expected to slide in thereafter. Can't really take any more fire images from Australia, it's too painful. So just remember that the genesis of this gorgeously colored sunset in Sydney is courtesy of something terrible. Top quakes of the last day hit Tonga. They can handle six-pointers in that part of the world. And that takes us to our first science article. While the fracking wastewater injection quakes are one thing, adding pressure to the ground. This is the first example of humans taking weight off and then resulting in an earthquake. Vast rock removal in China at the surface took just enough weight off of a fault to give a mini thrust, and they say it wouldn't have happened without the construction. Two days ago, SpaceX Dragon took up a number of items, including the ESA's new re-entry CubeSat. Article on it is in your link list today, and this is a shot of it in ESA's plasma wind tunnel, meant to simulate both the solar wind bombardment and re-entry through the ionosphere. We've got a couple carbon items up next. First, a nice neat look at global forest carbon content. I will admit to surprise at the color depth in equatorial forests compared to those at higher latitudes. But you know, carbon can be confusing, like when it's spread across the ocean floor for reasons unknown, and when that spread material has an aged component. They are concluding here that graphite vents on the sea floor are doing it. They found one of them. The problem is that they forgot that this aged population of carbon is aged the oceans over, and these vents would be putting newer layers on top. But that's not as big of an oops as what we see in this volcano study. Folks, as the climate game is shifting internally, even if it is absent in the mainstream news, the search for other warming explanations is abounding. And sadly here, they chose something definitively known to cause ice ages. Volcanic winter is like nuclear winter where the sky is blocked by the particles, and they just figured they'd ignore that aspect of volcanoes and try to sneak some selective math into the lexicon. From making fun of carbon science to that scratchy feeling you get in the back of your throat. Chances are your body is up to 44 times as polluted with BPA as scientists believed. This not only informs about the effectiveness and potential intelligence of those officials responsible for our health and who were giving us those numbers for years, but it should be a call to all to at very least reduce the plastic that we get into our bodies. Let's get back to space for the top articles and we're starting with Pluto. Turns out Pluto does the same bow shock induced field against the solar wind that other planets do, but New Horizons also couldn't escape the sea of interstellar ions from the rest of the galaxy. They say that the wake of Pluto has been having noticeable effects on those ions passing through. The paper is free to read from the AGU. Up next, a great confirmation of star water coming from the moon. They are finding that the surface magnetic anomalies on the moon have virtually no water, and the unprotected surface regions do. This confirms the solar wind production mechanism since the magnetism on the surface of the moon would be blocking that solar wind, and for those who are new here, it was our 2013 declaration that solar wind hydrogen breaks oxygen from space rocks and combines to form hydroxyls and water. This has been confirmed over 30 times in the last six years, and let's add one more to that list here today. Last but not least, the solar modeling problem. After the 1990s saw tremendous agreement between solar models and observations that really began to change in the first decade of the new millennium. The refined data leave us ever more distant from the resolution of the growing disagreement between reality and how we understand the sun. We have been alluding to this for the last few days, and it is full face today with the solar modeling problem. It's the true power of our star that they're missing. The ability to punctuate these long periods of predictable activity with tremendously rare and magnificent outbursts. It's happened before, and it will happen again. 
We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 420 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.